Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. And don't forget promo code Cinnabar2023 for 15% off on all orders with our sponsor, Old Arms of Idaho, through the end of 2023. Now today we've got a really interesting episode for you. We're going to be comparing a modern AR, or Armalite rifle platform. This one in particular is a Ruger AR556 a detachable magazine semi-automatic rifle with a, a rifle that's been out for 120 years. Winchester's series of semi-automatic detachable magazine rifles that started with the model 8, 1903 and evolved into the pinnacle of that series, the model 1910 and 401 Winchester self-loader, the largest caliber that they produced with this particular uh, series. This one is just a beautiful deluxe checkered pistol grip in high condition and I'm really looking forward to shooting it today. So let's take a little closer look at these similar but vastly different rifles. Okay, so probably most of you are familiar with this AR platform. You know, we've got a collapsible stock, a true pistol grip stock, um, charging handles back here, detachable magazine, and yes, in, in Oregon, measure 14, 114 hasn't gone into effect, so yes, this 30 round magazine is, is still legal to own and operate. Um, they're not terribly difficult to take down, but it, it does take a little bit of, of work to do that. Now this Winchester uh, 1910, of course, we've got a, a wooden stock. In this case, a, a very beautiful uh, figured wooden stock. Our charging handle actually is up here, which is a, quite a lot different than the AR platform. And actually, it is a takedown. This, this thumb wheel back here, you push in this lock here, unscrew that, and the, the whole thing comes apart into two pieces rather e more easily than the uh, AR platform does. Okay, of course, we have a, a detachable magazine as well. This one is, is the more typical, it's just a five round, but they did actually make a 10 round and even 20 round magazine in this series. Now the, the 1907 which preceded this one in 351 self-loader was very very popular in law enforcement and military so a lot of those had a larger capacity magazine. In fact the, the French ordered a bunch of them in full auto in World War I with uh, I think it was 20 round magazines. Now Real soon I'm going to do a, a video on the whole series of these semi-autos, so keep an eye out for that one. I just got the last one of the series that I was missing in my collection, so we'll take them out and, and compare them with all the other in, in this particular series. Now the majority of the AR platforms historically were in this 223 caliber or 556 caliber. And of course today they're being chambered in a lot of different and, and in many cases more powerful cartridges. But for our comparison here, um, we're, we're going to compare this 223 because that's what I have to this 401. And of course the 401 self-loader packs a lot more punch. Now. These, this 223 caliber, these are a, a 55 grain uh, projectile traveling at about oh, 3,000 to 3,200 feet per second. And they make about 1,200 foot pounds of muzzle energy. Now, these 401s, this is a 200 grain projectile, which is much, much bigger, of course, almost four times as big. And it's traveling surprisingly fast at 2,150 feet per second. I was a little surprised when I looked that up. They pack a, a muzzle energy of over 2,000 uh, foot-pounds, so quite a little bit more energy in these, even though these uh, smaller, faster projectile, a little slower, but still packs a heck of a punch for, for a, a fairly small cartridge. Okay, we're going to take a few shots at steel here, and before we get started, there is a, a couple other differences between this AR and the Winchester. Now, first of all, this AR is a much scarier looking rifle than the Winchester. And the, the other is that the, the AR, of course, is a gas operated rifle and, and the Winchester is a recoil operated. And it has a very heavy reciprocal mass, so it, it's quite a little bit heavier rifle. Okay, let's see how we do on steel here. This is, things kind of short coupled, we've got to extend it all the way. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Oh, oh, caught it swinging up and, and shot right underneath it. Okay, let's put it back on safe. And let's see the difference here with this 1910 Winchester. The magazines are kind of tough to get in there, but looks like we did it. And of course we charge with this handle up here. There we go. Okay, let's see how we do with it. Maybe we'll slow down a little bit so we don't get those targets swinging so much. Oh, certainly a, a little more punch. Oh, I love it. This thing has a, quite a little bit more felt recoil. Oh, man, that is a fun rifle to shoot. Okay, let's see what it might do on a few milk jugs. Okay, now we're going to do a very scientific experiment here. We're going to compare and contrast a very small projectile at high velocity against a larger projectile at a little lower velocity. The effects on the average milk jug. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see what the Winchester does with a big slower slug. <laughs> I'd say that's kind of night and day difference. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so that <laughs> that was a little more different than I even expected. Now I do believe that I found my new favorite gun. Of course, pretty much my new favorite gun is is the last one that I shot. But this is this is a dandy. What a wonderful wonderful old rifle and a beauty too. Now. Thanks for joining us today, and I'm going to spend a few minutes and share a few of my thoughts on, on current events and legal ownership of guns just like this. And if that subject doesn't interest you, I won't be offended at all if you sign off right here, and we'll see you next time here on the Cinnabar. But if you're interested in, in, in a few of my thoughts, stick around. Um, you know, one of the things that occurs to me that these rifles have been around and available for 60 years. These rifles have been around and available for 120 years. Yet these mass shootings are just a product of the last couple of decades. So what's behind it? It can't be the rifles. These rifles were around for a century before people started picking them up and trying to shoot as many innocent people as they could at a time. It, it isn't mental health issues per se. I mean, the, we had mental health issues long ago. I remember my grandfather, who was a World War I veteran, talking about all the doughboys that came home from the trenches that were just messed up, shell-shocked, what he called it, and what they called it at the time, we call it PTSD today. They, they, they struggled horribly to get back into society and did some terrible things. But as far as I can tell, not a one of those with severe mental health issues, picked up one of these Winchester rifles and shot up a bunch of innocent children. It just didn't happen. So, you know, we all want easy answers to stop this. We're all disgusted and dismayed by these shootings, especially of children. I spent 40 years as a part-time teacher and a head high school track and field coach. I spent a huge amount of my life trying to shape and mold and help kids grow up to be successful and decent people. And I would have given my life for any of them if any of that crap would have happened while I was in the classroom or as an educator. I want easy answers too, but the, the, the answer can't be we just take away people's 
constitutionally guaranteed rights because we got to do something even though if we're honest with ourselves even if you're an advocate of gun control if you're honest with yourself and you've thought about this you have to know that it won't change anything there are millions and millions of these guns out there and if we outlawed them tomorrow a small percentage of them would come in okay so if a deranged person wants to go out and shoot up innocent people they're gonna find one of these whether they're legal or not it's just gonna be the people who are completely law-abiding that will turn them in the people that mean to do others harm they don't care they don't care a bit sorry I get a little choked up on this issue you know, it's already illegal to kill people. Making it a gun violation, too, is not going to dissuade anybody who, who is dead set on harming other people. So let's, let's think a little deeper. What is, what is it that's going on? And I have a lot of opinions about that, too, but maybe more controversial than you want to hear right now. But it has to do with how we raise the last generation or two of children and what needs to change there. But we'll save that for another day. We're getting far too serious here. So thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed most of today's episode anyway. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.